Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be analysing a leak for the PS5's GPU. I've decided to do this as a separate video because I figure this is going to be kind of a long one. Uh, this is also an article, by the way, if you want the written word instead, you can of course find it in the description of this very video. So let's get us all onto the same page first. Uh, Sony and Microsoft will be launching their next generation systems, the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Scarlet, which is its code name, of course, in the holiday season of 2020. And as you would expect for the shift to the next generation, both systems will bring a significant improvement in performance over the current PS4 or Xbox One consoles. But in terms of actual raw details, both companies are keeping things rather close to their chest. Sony took the first blow in the PR war. Uh, lead system architect Mark Cerny, who was also, of course, the lead architect for the PS4 as well, had an interview with Wired, and he confirmed a few basic details that the system will be Zen 2 uh, CPU-based. It will have up to eight processor cores, no mention if it's going to be SMT or not. Chances are good that it will be an RDNA-based GPU. For those unfamiliar, that is AMD's Nave architecture, which is the uh, RX 5700. We'll get to that more in a moment because I have a feeling it's going to be a different generation. There's going to be super fast load times thanks to a next-generation SSD, although, once again, details were scarce there. And things such as the clock frequency of the GPU, the amount of memory, on the system, uh, the amount of teraflops that the system is capable of, none of that was mentioned. Uh, also, he also added was that there will be ray tracing support, although he didn't mention exactly what ray tracing the system would be capable of. He didn't explicitly state it would be graphics, ray tracing could also be audio, but the way that he kind of said it in the interview and the interviewer himself believes that he was referring to graphics, although Cerny has not confirmed that since, at least to my knowledge, so please let me know if I'm wrong there. And also the system will have advanced 3D audio capabilities, which I suspect is going to be really handy for virtual reality stuff. Microsoft, on the other hand, basically just mirrored what Sony did. I'm not going to lie, I think that the E3 conference from Microsoft was really impressive, and what they have kind of teased with the next generation Xbox sounds really cool, but both companies are playing things really close to their chest. All Microsoft really said differently was that they are targeting high frame rates up to 120 frames per second. They doubled down on that a little bit more than what Sony have. And they also confirmed hardware ray tracing verbally, which is nice. But I think that it's rather obvious that both companies are being rather coy at the moment. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, if you kind of throw all the marketing hype now, you've got nothing to tease people with. And it's, you know, not like the system's going to be launched tomorrow. It's well over a year into the future. And secondly, and I've said this several times prior, that... Raw T-flop comparisons are kind of a pain in the butt for both Sony and Microsoft for the upcoming generation. With the Xbox One X, it has six teraflops of performance, and considering that the next generation systems, let's say they have 12 T-flops just for the sake of this video, or at least this portion of the video, that means that to the layman, or laywoman if you prefer, it only sounds like the PS5 or what have you is twice as powerful as the Xbox One X when that is not the case because they have a significantly more advanced uh, GPU. So let's start talking about that now. So there have been a couple of leaks prior uh, to the APU or well, what we think is the APU for the PS5. So I'll circle back to that in a moment, but I want to first bring your attention to a leak on Twitter from well-known user Kamichi. He and I usually share stuff, and he publicly said that he has found a GPU 
which is known as Oberon. Now, he is not sharing where he's found this information because he's pretty certain it could easily get someone fired. So he's keeping this very close to his chest, which is fair enough. Obviously, at the end of the day, leaks are cool and fun, but we don't want to impact anyone's job in reality, right? But the GPU uh, has three clock frequencies, 800 megahertz, 911 megahertz, and finally, 2 gigahertz. Ignore the, the 2 gigahertz one for a moment, please, and focus on the first two. Those are identical clock frequencies, to the PS4 and the PS4 Pro, respectively, for its GPU. The GPU of the PS4 runs at 800 megahertz, and the PS4 Pro runs at 911 megahertz, which would be very sensible for backwards compatibility. Now, the 2 gigahertz, that's really fast, but I want to get into that in a moment. So, I actually messaged Kamichi, uh, because, as I said, he and I kind of swap stuff a lot, particularly when we, uh, Ryzen 3000 was coming out. I'm not, by the way, saying that I'm his best buddy, just that, you know, we kind of all talk together on Twitter. There's like a group of us that regularly uh, kind of talk together. And he said he can't reveal any of the information. Once again, he just reiterated that. I'm not asking him to reveal his sources, but he did call it Oberon native mode. So this basically refers to the fact that he doesn't know the number of compute units which are running in the full potential of this GPU. But he said that he does know that the system has two backwards compatibility modes. Well, actually, he thinks it's backwards compatibility mode because it's BC1 is 40 compute units and BC2 is 18 compute units. The native, once again, in native, we are just referring to the PS5 running in its normal operating mode. So there is no special source going on. The GPU is not down clocking. It's not saying, oh, actually, I see a PS4 piece of software here. I need to run at slower clock frequencies or with fewer compute units to retain uh, you know, compatibility. I'm running in PS5 mode. The number of compute units there is not known. So I tend to agree with him because BC1 is very similar to the number of the PS4. Uh, the PS4, uh, sorry, that. Yeah, BC1 is very similar to the number of in PS4 Pro. There's 36 compute units in the PS4 Pro, so that would indicate that PS4 Pro games would run better on the PS5. Meanwhile, BC2 is 18 compute units, which is the identical number as the PS4 base model. So it kind of seems like to me that if a piece of software runs on the PS5, that's a PS4 game, and let's say it was like one of the first PS4 games that was released, let's call it Killzone Shadowfall, as I'm pretty certain that did not have a patch for the PS4, the system will say, ah, okay, we don't think this has a PS4 Pro mode, I'm just going to run this in the very basic PS4 mode. Uh, so that basically would mean that the system would have the highest probability of getting backwards compatibility working without the software erroring, with it running at different frame rates, without exploding, you know, that kind of thing, without screwed up physics, basically. Or just the software not running. So, to summarise, that means that in the PS4 mode, it would have 18 compute units running at 800 megahertz. The PS4 Pro mode would have 911 megahertz frequency with 40 compute units, and the PS5 would have 2 gigahertz GPU clock frequency, but all of the compute units will be running. Unfortunately, the number is not known. So, if you recall, back in April, there was rumors about Gonzalo, which is thought to be the PS5 APU. Uh, the string is pretty lengthy. It's 7G, 16, 72 A, E, 8, J, B, 2, underscore, 32, slash, 10, slash, 18, underscore, 13, F, 8. Now, that sounds like a lot of gobbledygook, but, and you can actually decode this. Uh, but the too long didn't read, and all you need to know is it basically means that it's a Zen 2 processor with 8 CPU cores running up to 3200 MHz with a base frequency of 1.6 GHz. The 1.6 GHz is also super duper interesting, as it 
is identical to the PS4 base model CPU, albeit the PS4 base model had some changes. The PS4 base model uh, was running with, well, Jaguar. So for a start, A, it did not have SMT capabilities, and B, Jaguar compared to Zen, even at the cl same clock frequency, is like me saying to you, well, I tell you what, you be on this little pedal bike here, and your friend can be in a Ferrari, uh, and you're going to have to race like 100 miles. Now, you may think I'm being really silly, but no, the IPC improvements for Zen 2 compared to Jaguar are just, like, ridiculous. I have done multiple analysis uh, videos of Zen, uh, sorry, of uh, Jaguar in the past, so you can go ahead and check those out if you so desire. But, um, yeah, so Jaguar is a low-performance, low-power CPU, whereas Zen 2 obviously basically just ravages it. Um... So that essentially means that the CPU has a base frequency of 1.6 GHz and a boost frequency of 3.2 GHz, but boost and base does not make any sense with a console. So instead, these are almost certainly referring to backwards compatibility potential. Now, the thing is, this would mean that it would tie in extremely well, just perfectly, to some patents that were discovered. So these patents were discovered for backwards compatibility. Um, I actually found a couple myself. And there's a whole bunch of patents that you can find online for backwards compatibility. And basically it's fine-grained control of the GPU, the CPU, the memory, and just all of the different components of the system. I won't go super in-depth into that in this video because I would be here for quite some time. But all you need to know is that the CPU and the GPU will downclock in terms of frequency. Parts of the system will essentially lock itself off. So, for example, the SMT units of Zen 2 would be going bye-bye. The cache would reduce in uh, availability. You would see parts of like the, the actual CPU pipeline. Basically, it would just become less competent, less powerful than what it is. It would just essentially dumb itself down, and the reason behind that, once again, is for backwards compatibility, and I would like to stress for a second time that this is only for backwards compatibility. When a PS5 game is uh, detected, it would run in its normal mode. Now, back to the clock frequency of the GPU. 2 gigahertz is... a lot. It's way faster than the RX 5700 XT, even the custom models, it's faster than that. So, there's a couple of possibilities. The first possibility is that this is, like, super rare, it doesn't actually hit that, they're just using it, uh, and the reality is that the CPU runs at much slower clock frequencies. Uh, I don't think that that's very accurate, but it's a potential possibility it's only a leak at the end of the day, so it could be that they're testing this hardware, and testing a particular chip is not the same thing as it appearing in retail consoles. There is a distinct difference. This could be an engineering sample. It could be that they're testing things to see like the outside potential of a chip with very low yields. It could be that this is for development purposes only. This could not even be for the PS5 or a thousand other different potentials. The other possibility is that this chip is not being manufactured on the 7NM process that we currently have. Instead, it's being developed on the 7NM Plus process from TSMC, and that would also make an awful lot of sense, given TSMC are going to be ramping that production process up for next year, and also that the PS5, of course, is also going to launch next year. Furthermore, um, the next generation, uh, sorry, the 7NM Plus process is using EUV. Uh, basically, it's not a revolution. It's not going to massively, it's not the same thing as shrinking from 14NM down to 7NM. But what it does do is provide a little bit of additional space. I think like... Uh, you get around 15% additional density and around 10-ish percent, if memory serves, uh, better power. Uh, sorry, uh, higher performance at the same power. So that's that's pretty tangible, and it could be that's how that they're doing this. 
I also wouldn't be surprised if the cooling solution for the PS5 is not subtle. They may be going in a very similar uh, approach to what uh, Microsoft did for the Xbox One X. In other words, they're building themselves basically a vapor chamber and that the system is going to be as cool as possible. Another potential is that the GPU will go up and down in clock frequency, a little bit like, um, let's say, modern day GPUs in the uh, on PC or even modern day CPUs like Ryzen. The only issue I have with this is it would kind of be a bit more difficult for developers because obviously if the amount of performance essentially per frame changes then the performance target in other words the resolution or frame rate or something has to change per frame so it's going to be really interesting to see what we have from these next generation consoles and i'm going to be really fascinated to see what the price of this thing is because this doesn't seem like it's going to cost like you know 199 US dollars, does it? Um, I I suspect that this console is going to be quite expensive. I, I I think it's going to be at least 399, and I frankly wouldn't be surprised if it's at least 100 bucks more than that. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then the normal stuff like share, comment, and subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.